Welcome back, everyone. We're diving into the world of AI again today. Always fun. This time, it's LLM agents. You guys sent in some seriously cool research on it. You bet they did. Understanding the planning of LLM agents. A survey. Yeah, it's a fascinating one. Gets into all the ways these agents are upping their planning game. Planning is like their superpower. Right. <laughs> and you know me, always eager to unpack that. And how? So this paper you sent, it's not messing around. Dives deep into five big areas. Five core pillars, you could say, yeah. of how these LLMs are becoming masterminds. Well, maybe not masterminds yet, but they're getting there. Well, let's break it down for everyone listening. We're talking about how LLMs are learning to break down tasks, generate multiple plans, use external tools like it's nothing, learn from their mistakes. Which we all know is important. So important. And even tap into memory. The fact that they can even USC memory now is mind-blowing in itself, isn't it? Totally. Okay, so this paper... It's like a roadmap to the future of AI, and lucky us, we get to explore it. First stop, task decomposition. The bread and butter of getting things done, even for AI. Basically, it's teaching LLMs to, as they say, divide and conquer. Just like we humans do when we're tackling something big. Precisely. Instead of freaking out at a massive task, they're learning to break it down into bite-sized chunks. So instead of trying to cook the entire meal at once... Which, let's be honest, usually ends in disaster, even for us seasoned chefs. Truth. They're learning to chop the veggies, preheat the oven, measure everything out, all as separate steps. Exactly. And the research here focuses on two main ways they do this. Decomposition first, where they map out the whole thing up front, and interleave decomposition, which is more like figuring it out as they go along. Oh, so like... The difference between following a recipe to the letter versus adding a pinch of salt here and there as you taste the soup. Now you're getting it. Sounds simple, but getting LLMs to do this well, that's huge for the real world. Yeah. Think about it. If you want an LLM to plan your cross-country road trip, it needs to handle flights, hotels, rental cars. Don't forget the snacks for the road. Right. And sightseeing. It's a lot to juggle. Mm. Being able to break that monster task down into manageable chunks, that's key. And that's what makes this research so exciting. Speaking of exciting, the paper actually gives some pretty cool examples of how researchers are, you know, tackling these challenges, like hugging GPT. Ah, uh, yes, hugging GPT. Now that one is fascinating. Picture this, an LLM calling the shots, conducting a whole orchestra of AI models. Wait, hold on, AI orchestra? You're making this up. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> no, seriously, hugging GPT. It's all about this LLM delegating tasks to specialized AI models. Each one's a pro at something different, writing, making images, crunching data. So it's like having an AI project manager who knows exactly which expert to call for every little thing. That's insane. I'm saying good, right. Totally. Okay, what about plan and solve? That one sounds pretty self-explanatory. It is. It's all about making LLMs better at, well, solving problems step by step. And it's showing some serious promise, especially in things like math. So you're saying I could have an LLM do my algebra homework for me soon. I knew there was a reason I was excited about this. Yeah, maybe not quite yet. But hey, a few years down the line, who knows? It's a glimpse into a future where LLMs could be helping us with some seriously complex thinking. Okay, I'm sold. Last but not least, we have prog prompt. Ah, uh, prog prompt. If plan and solve is about thinking, prog prompt is about doing. It takes those planned out steps and turns them into real, actual code. Wait. So instead of just telling me how to bake a cake... Which, let's be real, is only half the battle. E easy half. Prog Prompt would write the program for a robot to actually bake it for me. Boom. You got it. Okay, that's impressive. So, task decomposition, that's the foundation. But it's just the first step, right? Oh yeah, we're just getting started. Now we're moving on to something even cooler, especially for you strategy nerds out there. Hit me with it. What's next? Buckle up. It's multi-plan selection time. Multi-plan selection. Okay, it sounds exactly like what it is. But what makes it so special in the world of LLMs? Picture this. Instead of just spitting out one solution to a problem, an LLM is trained to explore a bunch of different plans before deciding. Whoa, hold on. It's like having multiple strategies all laid out on the table before making a move. Exactly. Like having a whole team of expert strategists each pitching their best shot. Man, I could have used that in my last chess tournament. So how does the LLM pick a winner? That's where it gets really interesting. Researchers are coming up with these techniques, right, that let LLMs actually evaluate each plan. Like, how efficient is it? How likely is it to work? Is it even possible in the real world? It's not just about brainstorming. It's about strategic thinking. Okay, now that's what I call thinking ahead. It's like, these LLMs are learning to play 4D chess while we're stuck with the regular kind of... Something like that. 
So what are some of the top contenders in this multi-plan selection arena? Two big ones are self-consistency and tree of thought. Okay, those are some cool names. Let's start with self-consistency. What's the basic idea there? So self-consistency uses this cool trick LLMs can do. They can generate multiple, like slightly different reasoning paths for the same problem. So like different ways of getting to the same answer. Exactly. Imagine the LLM is writing a plan, but it writes like five different drafts of it. Then instead of just picking one at random, it checks each draft for consistency. Like, does it contradict itself anywhere? Are there any logical leaps? The idea is the most self-consistent plan is probably the best one. So the LLM is basically cross-checking its own work. Pretty smart. Right. And then there's tree of thought or Toti for short. Toti. I like it. Sounds more visual somehow. Yeah. It is. It's all about structuring the LLM's reasoning process as a tree. Each branch of the tree represents a different line of thought, a different choice it could make. Like a flow chart for decision making. Exactly. It helps the LLM explore different possibilities in a more organized way and makes it easier to see the most promising path. This is blowing my mind. We're giving these LLMs some seriously powerful planning tools. We are, but you know, even the best plans can go wrong. Oh, tell me about it. That's where the next piece comes in, reflection and refinement. Because even AI needs to learn from its mistakes. <laughs> Makes sense. We all mess up sometimes. Exactly. It's about making LLMs more adaptable. Just like humans, they get better when they can analyze what went wrong and adjust their strategy. So how do you teach an LLM to learn from its mistakes? It's not like we can give it a time out. Well, one way is to have the LLM actually generate feedback on its own plans. It looks at its past actions, what happened as a result, and tries to spot any weaknesses or areas for improvement. So it's like it's doing a performance review on itself. Exactly. And there's some really cool examples of this in action. Self-refine, reflection, and critic. Let's hear it. Self-refine is pretty much what it sounds like. The LLM refines its plans over and over based on the feedback it generates. So it's like constantly trying to one-up itself. Yep, always striving for that perfect plan. Then we've got reflection, which is similar, but it adds in this idea of an evaluator. Like a judge in a competition. Kind of, it's like a more critical eye, giving feedback not just on the outcome, but on the decision-making process itself. So it's not just, did you win or lose? It's, how did you play the game? You got it. And finally, we've got critic. Always gotta have a bit of tough love, right? Love it. Critic stands for critique, improve, and tutor. It really emphasizes the value of outside feedback, not just self-assessment, but bringing in external knowledge to really put those plans to the test. So it's like having a panel of experts poking holes in your ideas, making sure they hold water. Exactly, because sometimes we all need that outside perspective to get better, even AI. But even with all this reflection and refinement, there's a limit to how much any one AI can learn on its own, right? Totally. That's where teamwork comes in. Even AI needs a helping hand sometimes. 100%. And that's a perfect segue to our next big area, external planners. Sometimes you just got to call in the specialists. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm with you. Sometimes you just need an expert. But what does that look like in the AI world? We're talking about AI calling in AI for backup. Exactly. Think of it like this. Even the smartest LLM might need a specialist for certain tasks, right? Right. Like if you're building a house, you wouldn't ask the architect to do the plumbing. Spot on. Mm. You'd call a plumber. And in the world of LLM agents, those plumbers, those electricians, those are our external planners. They're like specialized algorithms, really good at specific types of planning problems. So instead of reinventing the wheel, the LLM can be like, okay, I'll handle the overall strategy, but I'm calling in the expert for this tricky bit. Precisely. And the paper talks about these things called PDDL models. PDDL, it stands for Planning Domain Definition Language. F PDDL. Yeah. Catchy. I'm guessing that's not something I'd hear in everyday conversation. Probably not. But basically... It's a way to describe a planning problem in a language that computers get. So it's like translating a real world problem, which can be messy with like a million variables. Oh, tell me about it. Into something nice and neat that a computer can actually work with. You nailed it. And what's cool is that LLMs are getting really good at doing this translation themselves. They can take a super complex problem like planning deliveries with tons of different stops and routes and turn it into PDDL. So the LLM is like the interpreter between us humans and these specialized planning programs. Exactly. A real bridge builder. And the paper gives some really cool examples like LMLMP, which combines an LLM with, you guessed it, a symbolic planner. 
and they work together seamlessly. Teamwork makes the dream work, even in AI. Totally. But, you know, we've been talking a lot about the logic of planning, the step-by-step -step stuff. Right. The nuts and bolts. But what about, like, intuition, experience? The stuff that's not so easily explained. Ah, you're reading my mind. That's where things get really interesting. And it brings us to our final stop on this journey. Memory. Because let's be honest, even with all these fancy algorithms, nothing beats experience. Truer words have never been spoken. Learn from your mistakes. Exactly. Bye. Just like humans build up expertise over time, with all those memories, successes, failures, LLMs can benefit from that too. Accessing past experiences, learning from them, that's huge. Okay, I'm on board, but how do you even begin to give an AI memory? That's the million dollar question. And the research talks about two main approaches, RG-based memory and embodied memory. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Rag-based memory doesn't exactly scream high-tech AI to me. I know, right? RA stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Bear with me. Imagine having this massive library, right? Books, articles, everything you've ever read, and you can instantly pull out the exact information you need whenever you need it. That's RAG. So it's like giving the LLM access to this huge external hard drive of knowledge. You got it. And it's becoming super important as LLMs tackle more real world stuff. Imagine an LLM writing a news article about something that's changing super fast. With RA, it can constantly update its knowledge, cross-reference facts, even spot if something seems fishy. Okay, that's seriously cool. It's like having a whole research team on speed dial. Right. Now, embodied memory, that's a bit different. Instead of just storing information externally, it's about weaving those past experiences directly into the LLMs, like core. So it's not just remembering facts, it's more like internalizing them. Shaping the way the LLM sees the world. You're getting it. Yeah. It's like the difference between memorizing a map and actually walking those streets yourself. Embodied memory gives the LLM that gut feeling, that intuition that comes from experience. That's wild. And of course, the paper wouldn't be complete without some real world examples. Oh, absolutely. There's call M, continual learning with adaptive memory. Catchy, right? You're sure. Better than PDDL, at least. Huh. Well, Colin has had some crazy good results. They're training LLMs on these streams of real-world data, so the LLMs are constantly updating their internal models, learning from every new experience. It's like giving them on-the-job training, but for AI. Exactly. And there's so much more happening in this space. Mm -hmm. Another cool one is TDT, Text Decision Transformer. This one's all about teaching LLMs to make decisions based on like sequences of text like learning from a choose-your-own-adventure book. So instead of just processing static info, they're learning from how events play out, the consequences of different choices. Exactly. They're building up this whole different level of understanding. Okay, my mind is officially blown. <laughs> so we've got task decomposition, multi-plan selection, external planners, reflection and refinement, and memory, five areas where LLMs are making some seriously impressive strides. It's mind-blowing stuff. We're talking about AI that can plan, strategize, learn from experience, stuff we used to think only humans could do. It really feels like we're on the verge of something big, a whole new era for AI. But of course, with every exciting new frontier comes a whole new set of challenges. For sure, and the paper doesn't shy away from those. As much as it highlights the potential here, it's also honest about the hurdles. So what are some of the big ones that researchers are grappling with? Well, one that always comes up is hallucinations. You know, because LLMs are so good at generating text, it can be hard to tell when they're making stuff up. So it's like, is this real? Or is the AI just really good at writing fiction? Exactly. And then there's the whole issue of making sure the plans they come up with are actually doable. LLMs can be super creative, but those ideas need to work in the real world with all its limitations. It's like designing a flying car cool idea, but can you actually build it? And will it fly yeah. without crashing? Exactly. And then there's the never-ending challenge of figuring out how to measure all of this. How do we know if an LLM is actually intelligent? How do we compare different approaches? It's a moving target. Always. It's exciting, but definitely keeps you on your toes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, this research, it's a glimpse into a future where these LLM agents could be everywhere. Automating tasks, helping us be more creative, even making better decisions. It's a future full of potential, that's for sure. But like you said, also some big questions. Definitely. And that brings us to the question we'll leave you with today. We've been talking about how all this planning stuff works, the technical side. But the bigger picture, that's what's really fascinating. If we can create AI that can plan and learn like this, what's that mean for us? For the future of work, creativity, even the very idea of intelligence itself, 
Those are the questions we'll keep exploring, and we hope you'll join us. Until next time, keep asking those big questions and keep diving deep.